Hold on, I got perfume. <laughs> <laughs> I put my drink in. Jason! Think, oh! Oh, no. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, you guys are here. Here we go. We got, we got Mike. Hey, what's up? We got Staples and Tents. What's up, dude? Jason, slow on it. Hey. There you go. So we're out here with Mike at Overland Bound. Hey guys, what's going on, man? Yeah, and then we have Swell Runner back here in the background <laughs> doing some recording. How cool is that? We're gonna talk about that sale video that you did. You had me thinking that you really sold that thing. <laughs> so I thought before. you were gonna upgrade. I did. I was. The decision was made, but I changed my mind. Yeah. yeah. He should have right, upgraded. So okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, so what do we got? Okay, so no, it, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. So um, when I was choosing between two different rigs, um, I had a, a number of features that I wanted in an in an overland rig, and this matched the same set of features as a Disco Two, right? So the Discovery Two, and then what I did is I looked at true cost of ownership and my research, and I was like, you know what? This has proven to be a little bit more reliable, and so I went with the Land Cruiser route. And then I chose to um, stick with, I, I waited until I found one with the lockers, with the back. Mm. Um, and that took, actually it took quite a while, because I, I, I kind of knew I wanted black, and I wanted to get something with low miles, so it had 94,000 miles on it. When oh I got, wow. It was just broken in, basically. <laughs> and so I got this, I thought I was crazy for spending what I spent on it. Which is, it, it was, it was 13000 Five hundred dollars, but in what year? But it's nineteen ninety six. Um, this oh, and I bought it in twenty ten. Oh, yeah, and it had the front bumper, it had the rear bumper, and he had the lift in the back. So I got front bumper, rear bumper, lift in the back. So thirteen thousand. That was a steal. So it was. It was <laughs> I looked back on it, and I'm like, okay, I didn't do so bad. No. So that's what it is. Ninety six Land Cruiser. Um, it's got the larger, uh, the larger motor in it, so I don't really have any problems with the larger thirty. Five tires. I'm running. Um, I'm running stock gearing. Uh, what I do is I run it in the power mode um, all the time, and that changes the shift location. Uh, and so that gives me what's that? Why do you? So I run it in the power mode all the time because it's got the larger tires on it and it's heavily weighted down, so there's a lot of armor. So by running it in power mode 100% of the time, basically it makes it streetable. It means that the, the it's it it shifts later, and so it keeps you in the power band longer. And honestly, people say, is it a dog? And I don't feel the difference. Like when I put the 35s on there, I don't feel the difference. It does great. Now, if you're towing uphill, you get six miles to the gallon. You don't have to tell us. Oh, you don't have to tell us. Right? Yeah. Dude, that's going to work. Rooftop so. tent, loaded down, we're nine miles per gallon yeah. this trip. So it's, it's, it's smiles per gallon is what it is. Ah. That's a good one. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm on the freeway, I'm getting about, you know, between 11 and 13 miles to gallon. Um, and uh, it's just bulletproof. The short block on the, on the 80 series is bulletproof. It's not going to go wrong. Around 200,000 miles, we had to replace some of the exterior components, like the air comp yeah, conditioner yeah. compressor, the uh, starter motor we, we replaced, and um, you know once we replaced the starter motor, it, 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 it seemed angry when we started it up. It's just like room. It really made a difference. I so mean, it was fast. Right. Oh, fast because mine takes yeah. a long time. Well, so so I just didn't know how much of a difference it made. It had the original starter on it, and when I would start it, even with the great battery, it would go wrong, 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 wrong. wrong. Yep. Yep. Replace the starter, and it just fires right up. It's really, it's really cool. Right. So maybe that's what one of those yeah. will have to get done because we have the same yeah. problem. Like, yeah. It has a longer part yeah. than yeah. it starts. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like ah, I'm going to start. But, yeah. Yeah. but I really don't want to. Yeah. And then go and then grab all your hoses on the older cars, make sure they're not brittle, um, stuff like that. Uh, and place some hoses underneath the, the hood, but it's been really good. What else can I tell you about? What else are you curious about? So we ended up going with the front car. Okay. And it was after I saw your Gobi uh, yeah. uh, rooftop. Yeah. Uh, right. And I see that you're able to walk around with 
Yes. Um, I haven't walked around on mine. Yep. But I I'm have. A big boy. Yeah. You know, I'm in 250, so uh, that was one of the bigger things that I was worried about. But um, this morning, as we were um, playing around, we had a Tapui <coughs> rooftop tent. Yep. Um, I finally had to play around on the board. Um, and I was happy. But Good. What do you what do you think it's about been, your Gobi? It's been great, and the, the reason I went with the Gobi, you can walk you can walk on it all day long, no problem. Um, what I usually recommend is a solid piece design uh, that is a solid piece of metal, so that things don't rattle apart, and that's one of the reasons I went with the Gobi rack. But the modular systems are getting better and better. It's just you know I, I got the the Gobi rack um, quite a few years ago, and at the time the modular yeah, man, I'm glad were, you're pretty much the only guy. You know, they they weren't that good. They they would they would rattle apart and you you hear them and things would loosen up. And so I went with a solid one piece unit. And then the other thing is you'll find racks that are, are contoured um, that follow the contour of the rig, and then you'll find a flat rack. Well, you want a flat rack because that way you can put any kind of box on top of it. And so the other thing about the Gobi that I liked was accommodated the spotlights, was a solid uh, piece design, and and um, it also had the flat, flat roof, right? So that's and basically the, what I got. It. Um, uh the yeah. ability to add accessories to it. Yeah. They really have an extensive um, yeah. accessory um, yeah. catalog. Yeah. You know? Hey, this is no secret too with, with Gobi, it's a it's a very it's a very good uh, rack setup, but give yourself some some lead time. Give yourself some lead time if you're gonna um, get a Gobi rack because they make them when you order them and they, they take time. So you know if you have a, a trip coming up next month and you want a rack, it's not that's not gonna be enough lead time to get a Gobi if you decide to go in that direction. So one last thing. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about this um, setup we got here. Okay. Now this is Hannah Quality. Uh, this is Hannah Quality Automotive, um, and I get asked about this this uh, dual sling out rear bumper all the time. Unfortunately, he doesn't really make them anymore. Um, and it, it is <laughs> so I could go on and on about how awesome this is, but if your if your followers um, wanted one, they, they, it would be hard for them to yeah. get. Although he did mention he may make a short run of these bumpers uh, this year towards the end of this year, but it's it's uh, uh, a dual sling out so that you can you can open it up this way as you can see we'll walk around and then underneath one of the great features not only does it have armor you know here but underneath that plating underneath is uh, it's about a quarter inch thick steel mm. so it becomes a part of the suspension and you guys know from from your rig that the departure angle isn't great on these rigs, right? So when you go over stuff, you're gonna you're gonna hit. Yeah. So that has that has a bit of a uh, bit of uh, armor. For you. We ended up making a uh, well, we had one manufactured. Yeah. Uh, one of our followers, uh, uh -huh. his name is Shaq, and uh -huh. he made. Uh, he used the existing bumper, yep. and so we have the same kind of system that you have with the yep. uh, dual swing guy. Great. So we have the tire rack on one side and the fuel on the other side. Great. Um, we love it, love yeah. it. Um, we've only been using it for about two or three weeks now. Uh -huh. It's great. It's a good. You know, and it makes the the, the back you know, totally accessible. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's a good setup. I love that dual swing out. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Man. Man, this is really super cool. Look that. Oh, one. What else should we talk? About? <laughs> I'm sorry, but look, you're gonna see our you're gonna see you're gonna see our trash. You're gonna see our. It's real. It's real life. That's right. This is real life. You want to see what? It, what it this is like? real life. So this is our this is our stuff here. This is our uh, this is our kitchen kit. That's my dirty clothes. That's my camera gear. And it looks like a mess because we're here at the expo and we had a bunch of expo stuff in here, and so it's all. Had to pop up. Well, yeah. ours looks like a mess, and we don't have an excuse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we went with a um, real quick. We went yep. with a uh, what's the name of our kitchen? Uh, the camp chef, and uh -huh. you know it has these little modular uh, yep. components to it. Um, we really do like it because it has an aluminum, aluminum top uh -huh. that you use for the cooking surface, mm -hmm. um, and it allowed us to consolidate, which is one of the things that I remember you saying was yeah. really big. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we also have cleaning, bathroom. And all things kitchen, great, great. all in one little thing. Cool. So that worked out really well. We pretty much have all that stuff. Like we pick and choose our parts, but we pretty much have all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about this. Okay. So you, um, the the tailgate storage there. 
Is that what you? Yep. Is that what you're referring to? Um, it's great. Um, as you guys know, storage is any place you can get storage. We store things um, in the back, behind the behind the panels, and then this is a um, uh, something from. Back Bay Customs makes this explicitly for the 80 series. Um, and it, let's see if I can do this real quick. Um, the great thing about the tailgate, about the tailgate storage is that you can have things that you are gonna need in a hurry that you, you don't wanna go digging for because even when your rig is fully packed, all you do is drop the tailgate you're always gonna have immediate access to this. So we have in here, we have a trauma kit. This is a, a, a trauma kit in case somebody gets hurt. We'll always have immediate access to it. We've got our tire repair kit, rope, we've got our air compressor. So we have some recovery gear in here because when you get stuck, you don't wanna go digging mm -hmm. and I don't wanna go digging up on top of the roof through my boxes. So we have it right here and it's immediately accessible. Now. Here's what I'm going to say, a lot of people get sticker shock when they see the price of this, but the thing is, the, the, um, the construction is, it's custom construction, he makes very few of them, it is solid steel, I mean that is a, a solid metal, um, it's very thick and it bolts right into the factory holes, which, mm. is, which is really nice. And then these locking latches are also just not cheap for him to get. So wow. it is, this is, it is, yeah, so it is, you know, it it's not, it's not inexpensive, but it's, it's a great option for tailgate storage. Yeah, sure, sure. Man, that is really nice. Yeah, it's cool. Um, did you have to cut any? Yes, very good question. Um, it's not a bolt-on thing. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. There's a template. You put the template down, you mark it, and then you take uh, just a grinder disc wheel and, and you cut, you know, you cut it out um, uh, to, uh, to actually get, have the open. Yeah, you have to cut it through. Yeah. So one thing about your FJ80 yep. uh, that you want people to know uh -huh. that they might not necessarily know. Um, well, you know, uh, I, I would say it, it has to be the stock aspect about the, the 80. Um, you know, people look at it and they're like, well, you must be running 410s or you must have switched out the gearing or, you know, you must have had to cut the, the, the wheel wells to fit the, you know, the 35 inch tires. And, and from the outside, it looks, you know, it looks like expedition vehicle. But what I would emphasize is that it's really close to stock. I do have a two and a half inch lift on there. It's old man emu, it's not that expensive. And with a two and a half inch lift, I was able to put on 35 inch tires. There's absolutely no rubbing. Didn't have to re-gear. It's got the power mode on with the larger engine, like I said. But it's really basically a stalker. And on the interior, the interior is, is bone stock as well. So most of the stuff on the outside that is not stock is for armor protection, because we do go off-road. We do rock crawl from time to time. Not the majority, but we do do it. So we want to have armor protection. But then beyond that, it's a pretty stock. Rate. And what I always like to tell people is, you know, you come to a show like we're at today, and you can get overwhelmed because you have rigs here that are above a million dollars, right? I mean, for crying out loud, these rigs are very expensive. You can get overwhelmed, but what I like to tell folks is, yeah, that's not for everyone, and you don't need to do that. You can get a fairly modest rig. You can start exploring and, and get out there, not to let the expensive gear to the budget. You don't gotta go that. You don't gotta go all in like that. That's how we feel. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Cool. Well, all right. Hey, man. You guys, thanks for talking. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah thanks for stopping by. Oh, dude, this yeah. is.